Coming up, the healthcare arena continues to face unprecedented challenges. How might the Pinnacle Network help your practice achieve success? Despite increasing awareness of inequities in healthcare, racial and ethnic disparities still trouble many cardiology practices. Find out how the Credo program hopes to change that. And later, we'll speak with Marianne Elma, ACC Director of Quality Innovation and Implementation, to learn more about the Hospital to Home initiative to reduce hospital readmissions. Stay with us. Welcome to this edition of the ACC Update for September. I'm Lisa Fletcher. The practice of cardiovascular medicine is undergoing unprecedented change. In these challenging times, your ACC believes that a systematic approach to quality care is the foundation for practice success. Over the past year, the ACC's Pinnacle Network has continued to help cardiovascular professionals, regardless of practice setting, achieve their goals. To date, the network has developed a series of quality improvement toolkits and hosted monthly webinars on hot topics like imaging lab accreditation, electronic prescribing, and preparing for the upcoming ICD-10 transition. The network also provides an online forum for sharing best practices and strategies related to data collection, quality improvement, and practice management. This fall, the Pinnacle Network is teaming up with Paragon Health to provide a six-part webinar series on issues related to advancing the business of cardiovascular care. The webinar series, which is free to ACC members, will kick off September 7th from 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The webinar series will feature key healthcare and or physician leaders addressing hot topics related to the evolving models of cardiovascular care. Learn more about this new series, as well as how to get involved with the Pinnacle Network at cardiosource.org slash Pinnacle Network. While numerous studies demonstrate the continued existence of disparities in healthcare, data consistently show that providers have minimal awareness of these disparities. A recent ACC survey of cardiologists underscored this point. According to the survey conducted by ACC's CardioServe and the Coalition to Reduce Disparities in CVD Outcomes, or CREDO, roughly a third of cardiologists acknowledge the existence of racial and ethnic health care disparities. But astonishingly, only 5% acknowledge disparities in their own practices. CREDO plans to use these survey results to develop educational materials and programs to help healthcare providers recognize disparities in their own practices and equitably treat their patients. CREDO's efforts to reduce disparities are also gaining support at the federal level. Dr. Garth Graham, recipient of the first ever CREDO Award, is one of CREDO's most active champions. As Deputy Assistant Secretary for Minority Health and Director of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Office of Minority Health, he has been integral in guiding federal efforts to catalyze a nationwide movement to eradicate health care disparities and achieve health equity. On a community level, um, physicians um, as well as other health care providers are leaders in their own community. So they, um, as much as they articulate um, challenges or, or support or lack of support for issues, um, really helps to galvanize um, uh, people who want change. The, the trail that ACC is blazing um, in terms of targeting cardiovascular outcomes, disparities, as well as specific things that help to reduce disparities in care, um, certainly from what um, ACC will be doing around collecting better data, um, but also being able to hold up best practices and move forward is going to be important. I was saying this earlier that I think the ACC is key for reducing cardiovascular disparities uh, because they are leaders in this arena um, and certainly um, understand the challenges um, and the problems that's faced in terms of cardiovascular disease uh, more than anyone. More information is available at cardiosource.org slash credo. Where will you be next March? Early bird registration is now open for the 61st annual scientific session in Chicago from March 24th to the 27th. New this year, ACC 12 will start a day earlier. Attendees should arrive early to take advantage of the meeting opening on Saturday, March 24th at 8 a.m. In addition, there will be an even greater emphasis on science and an increased number of maintenance and certification sessions. Meeting planners are also looking to harness new technologies to increase interactivity among attendees, as well as increase the number of learning opportunities. 
The ACC has also partnered with TCT for the interventional pathway portion of the meeting. For more information and to register, visit accscientificsession.org. The ACC's CardioSmart National Care Initiative is taking the message of heart-healthy living to NASCAR fans around the country as part of the Coca-Cola Company's Family Track Walks. These walks are designed to connect with racing fans and encourage them to begin walking as part of a healthy lifestyle. To date, ACC members have represented CardioSmart at the Talladega Motor Speedway and the Charlotte Motor Speedway in North Carolina, telling the crowds about heart-healthy living. The Coca-Cola Company is a founding supporter of CardioSmart. For more information about the track walks and other CardioSmart efforts, visit CardioSmart.org. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, we will be joined by ACC Director of Quality Innovation and Implementation, Marianne Elma. Stay with us. Attend the ACC's 2011 Legislative Conference, September 11 to 13 in Washington, D.C. Learn more about key issues facing cardiology. Meet directly with members of Congress. Don't miss the special Sunday night dinner to benefit the ACC pack with featured speaker, General Stanley McChrystal. Catch the highlights at cardiosource.org slash legislative conference. It's time to renew your commitment to quality cardiovascular care. Renew your ACC membership dues now and qualify for early dues payment rewards. For more information, visit www.cardiosource.org slash dues or contact the Resource Center. Since the Hospital to Home, or H2H initiative, launched in 2009, thousands of individual health care providers have committed to finding and sharing innovative new ways to reduce cardiac-related hospital readmissions. Most recently, H2H participants have risen to the occasion and are taking part in a series of challenges aligned with the initiative's three core concepts. One, early follow-up after hospital discharge. Two, medication management and three, patient recognition of signs and symptoms. With me today is Marianne Elma, ACC Director of Quality Innovation and Implementation. Marianne, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. What are the overarching goals of the H2H challenges? Well, there's a lot of information out there about improving transitions of care and reducing hospital readmissions. The H2H challenges are intended to help participants focus on one improvement idea at a time and to keep it simple so they can feel comfortable to test something without all of that information clutter. So we've created this structure and it's a very structured format intended to engage the community on an ongoing basis so that they can tackle each topic area at a time without feeling that stress. Each challenge project is built around those core concept areas. So there's one topic that each one addresses mm -hmm. and it has four webinars, two surveys, and one toolkit. Talk a little bit about the first challenge, the CU in 7 challenge. What is that all about? Well, the first CU in 7 challenge was focused on improving the early follow-up process. There's enough evidence out there to suggest that if you improve that process and ensure that there was a follow-up visit within seven days after hospital discharge, that the risk of being readmitted would go down and that the improvement of transitions would, there would be an improvement in transitions of care. And so we focused on that, but we realized that it's not just about making sure that that follow-up visit occurs within seven days. It also means that that visit is a good visit. Mm -hmm. So we broke that down into eight success measures to make it simple, actionable, and improvable for the participants. The first thing is that hospitals should make sure that they successfully identify heart failure and MI patients in the hospital before they're discharged. The second is that that they get, re they, get reassessed, they get assessed for risk for readmission mm -hmm. so that they can understand whether or not that patient needs more attention, whether or not they're at high, medium, or low risk for readmission. The follow-up visit has to be scheduled within seven days, which means that that appointment needs to be made and that that patient should have the documentation in hand when they leave. The discharge process is also a great time to address some of the barriers that patients tend to have to make that visit. And usually those are things that are really outside of the patient's control. And so in the discharge process, one of the success measures that we have is to make sure that that discussion occurs so that those things can be anticipated and addressed in advance. What's the next challenge? 
Well, the next challenge is on medication management. And we were hearing in the evidence and from the participants that that's really one of the toughest things to tackle. And we understand that including much, much more in this new challenge, the next one coming up, the patient perspective and the patient experience, that it'll go much, much further than the CU and 7 challenge has. How can people get involved? How can ACC members get involved? Well, the H2H initiative is a learning community, which means that right now we have about 1,000 facilities and nearly 2,000 individuals. It is a rich resource because of all of these people talking to each other. There is no right or wrong answer. And so the most important thing for ACC members is to register, to participate by rec having us recognize them and identify them through the website. That's h2hquality.org. Register online and then check locally what other facilities in their local area are also participating in H2H. So they can network and connect with each other at that grassroots level. And lastly, contribute. Contribute their ideas, their questions, and all of the parts of the challenges that we've put out there. Because it is a learning community and that's what, it's most, that's what it's most about. And as helpful as ACC is, those contributions make such a huge difference. Can't just let ACC do all the work. That's right. Doctors have a lot to contribute outside of the hospital. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. That is it for this edition of the ACC Update for September. Join us next time and continue to watch all the news from your college on cardiosource.org. I'm Lisa Fletcher. Thanks for watching.